All right, so in a previous exercise, I showed you the first and foremost step to successfully creating a complex 3D scene inside of Photoshop, and that's to establish a base 3D layer like we have here, and then zero out its position and orientation values. And just to confirm that that is the case, I'm going to double click on the thumbnail for this rear layer here inside the layers panel. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and rename this layer. Currently, it is the rear object in the stack, but it's going to become our overall camera scene. So I'm going to rename this layer camera. All right, having done that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the one and only mesh inside of this camera scene, which is rear right here inside the 3D panel. And now I'll go ahead and select the mesh tool, which is going to be the third tool down on the left side of the 3D panel. And notice here, because I have the rotate tool selected, I can see the orientation values, each of which are set to zero. So zero for X, zero for Y, zero for Z. I know I'm belaboring this point, but it's so important as you're about to see. All right, now I'll switch over to the pan tool so I can see the position values and they are each zero as well. Ultimately, we don't want to see this object face on like this. However, by virtue of the fact that we've zeroed out the values, it'll be much easier to assemble the various objects on top of each other into a scene. However, of course, somehow we need to modify the object so we have a more compelling view. And we're going to do that using the camera tool. So I'm going to go ahead and close the 3D panel. So step two is to go ahead and grab your camera rotate tool from the toolbox and then rotate your view of the scene as desired. And in my case, I'm dragging to the right so that I'm rotating my view to the right. I'm rotating the object relative to the view, relative to me, to the left, of course. And notice that I'm creating a view that doesn't expose the top of the camera, because if I do expose the top of the camera, that means I have more things that I have to draw where this camera is concerned. I'll have to create the shutter release, presumably the zoom buttons as well, all kinds of stuff going on here at the top. Just going to simplify my life a little bit by making sure I don't quite see the top, don't you know? It's a, totally up to you, of course, which portion of the camera you want to see. But I just want you to know, by way of a tip, you can simplify your life just a little bit by deciding what portions of an object you see and which portions you don't. Anyway, here's the camera view that I'm going with, and you can follow my lead as well if you want to get the same effect. With the orbit tool selected, as I've selected in my case, I can see the orientation values. I'm going to change the X value to 260, actually, uh, which pops up the camera just a little bit, as you can see. And then I'm going to change the Y value to 1. And actually, the Y value I had before was 359, you might have seen. Our orientation values are measured in degrees. So 1 and 359 are going to be basically the same thing. And then I'm going to change the Z value to 150. So we end up getting this effect here in my case. That's all right. I'm going to switch now to the pan tool. And I'm going to change the position values as follows. So I'm going to change the X value to 1660. So I'm trying to keep these values very simple, by the way. The Y value to negative 1500 and the Z value to negative 200. And then we end up with this view into the scene right here. All right, having done that, so in other words, we're zeroing out, just emphasizing this once again, forgive me, but we're zeroing out all the values that are associated with the meshes themselves, and we're doing all the work here with the camera. Having done that work, I'm going to go ahead and save out this view so that we can switch around our view anytime we like and come back to the original by clicking on a floppy disk icon, and I'll go ahead and call this guy Camera Cam because this is our camera looking at a camera. Click OK in order to save off this view, and we can come back to it any old time we like. All right, just for fun, let's establish a few other base settings here. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the thumbnail for this camera layer to bring up the 3D panel. And notice that I have my default lights here, infinite lights one, two, and three. I don't want those, so I'm going to switch them out for some lights I've created for you in advance by going up to the flyout menu icon and choosing replace lights presets. Navigate your way to the 13 complex scene folder right there and go ahead and click on the file that's called overhead spotlights.p3l. We'll come back to lens lighting later, but we want overhead spotlights right now. Click on the load button and you will end up with two spotlights, one called spotlight UR for upright and another one called spotlight UL for up left. Having loaded those two spotlights, go up to the 3D menu and choose ground plane shadow catcher so that we have something to cast shadows onto. If you get the alert message telling you that you have to ray trace the scene in order to see the shadows, just go ahead and click OK. And then finally, just to make sure all is well, go up to the 3D menu and choose Snap Object to Ground Plane. And that'll go ahead and snap the entire scene to the ground plane, 
It shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. At least it hasn't every time I've tried it out with this specific example. However, if you see a little bit of movement, it should be a one-time only thing, and you should have that camera sitting right there on the ground plane. All right, just to confirm that everything is the way it ought to be, click on Scene at the top of the list and change the quality setting to Ray Trace Draft. And Photoshop will go ahead and ray trace the scene. It should do so fairly quickly. It might take a couple of minutes, but you should get a sense of where the shadows are. Now, we don't have much in the way of shadows going on. I'm just going to go ahead and press the escape key in order to interrupt that ray tracing. Hide the 3D panel and turn on the white background layer so that we can see the shadows. And that's the scene so far. So we haven't made a heck of a lot of progress, but we have established the base settings for our overarching 3D scene.